Hi everybody. Well, I have a real problem today. My son's a GS 2005 that he uses every day to go to work. Beautiful bike. Last night on his way back, 70 mile an hour. So he tells me in an enormous bang. Smoke pouring out of the exhaust. No power came to a halt. So that's why there's no windscreen. We went down in his van took the windscreen off to get it in and the and the mirrors so I've got to find the problem I'm looking at it this morning you'll notice here there is some oil and going under the bike you realize the oil is from the exhaust it's come back through the exhaust joint so I think an exhaust valve has dropped and that may have caused and will have caused an enormous amount of damage. I'm not sure what we're going to find, but this is a project that I wasn't expecting today. Well, that's the crash bars off. I didn't bore you with that part. This is the left-hand cylinder. My son thought that this was the problem one, but who knows, when you're doing 70 mile an hour, uh, he wasn't sure at all. So I'm just gonna take this cover off and see if there's anything we can identify in here. Little catch there, and there the cable comes away. And then you need the special BMW tool, or special motor rad tool, that you've seen me use many times. Slide it on and the coil comes out. And very carefully Undo the plug. And now I'll just take the four bolts out so we can remove the cover. I'm not expecting to be able to tell anything from here, but we've got to start somewhere. I think I may have found a problem side. I cannot move the spark plug. It's, it's a very low torque it's taken up to. Oh, it's absolutely solid. And this isn't the best of tool to do it with. It's a 16mm standard socket with an extension. It only goes so far and it won't reach the plug. You need a special socket. Well, I can't, I don't know what else to try. And it's Saturday tea time. So frightened of breaking off. Something moved, but what moved? Boy, is that solid. I think I'm almost there. Yeah, I can turn it. Without the lever. Very rough. 
Wow. Look at that. I don't know whether you can see this better, but the plug is smashed to pieces. The threads are gone. Everything's gone. So, I don't suppose there's anything left of the piston or anything else. Whatever's caused this. So now the fun begins to start. I've taken off the plug as you know, the one that smashed to pieces on this model is another secondary plug under here. Taken off the ignition coil and I've uh, got to use my faithful horrible spanner again. Oh, I didn't think it was that. It is. It's okay. Wind it out from the hand so the thread must be intact. Now it's smashed. I oh, you can see it there against the the background, but the electrodes are smashed to pieces, but the thread is okay. So it's well now the exhaust has to come off and I don't think this has been off for a long time. This is rusted solid. They snap off so easy, so I've just got to take it so carefully. Oh, oh, it moved. No sudden jerks. In fact, I don't like putting my weight on it. Let's just do it. Oh dear. I doubt whether it's ever been off in 15 years, of course. It reaches 800 degrees in the exhaust. This is a, a capped bolt head. Uh, suddenly it went then, I don't know whether it snapped. No, it's come off. So that is one Good bit of news, all the four bolts came off without anything come snapping. I'm quite amazed, these, these studs so regularly snap. And you have to buy them again from BMW, special studs, but it's getting the old ones out rock hard. This is just a, a clamp or a spacer that means you can tighten up against it into the cylinder head. It's the whole out. thing's loose. So that just goes in on a, on a flange there so at least I can I can get things out now it's it's disconnected for now so now I've got to start on taking this apart oh what fun well here we are again now we've got to very meticulously take off and remember where they go I've just unclipped this whole bunch of cables that were cable tied into this hole here and I've just used a another cable tie just to keep them together for now. So now we start to disassemble all of this to be able to get the head off. So the injector here, first thing I'm going to, I've taken the clamps off, don't ask me how I did it, I just have to cut them off in the end, it was much much quicker. So now I can pull this off, there and there, these are actually printed with right for right so if you took them both off you've got to have them the right way round and then the injector itself will pull out of the cylinder so I'll put this to one side I'm just going to cable tie this up I don't want to bend anything I don't want to take off more than I need to take off either you can see two or three years ago I fitted all these stainless steel aftermarket, aftermarket uh, bolts from Motorworks and they're still pristine so it's certainly worth it.
So there's an earthen strap right in there. So I'll just take that one out. You can see the difference between the stainless steel bolts that I put on a couple of years ago from Motorworks. How immaculate they are, and of course the original BMW ones are corroded. So we have this one cable that's into the head here, and that comes off with this connector there. So that is all the wiring away. Okay, we now just need to prise this out to give us room to get to the cam chain on the sprocket itself. But we've got to find top dead centre next. So I need to get top dead centre on the compression straight. So I don't know whether it's that side or this side. I just get an indication with this chopstick through the spark plug hole when the piston pushes out. But of course it might be a right mess in there. Well it will be. And when these are loose, but they're all over the place because they've been smashed to pieces. So I've got to really check. So I've made myself a... I've made myself a top to the centre pin. There's instructions in Haynes manual. Now this is very very difficult to see but I thought I was almost on top dead centre and I just hit, I just rocked the wheel oh maybe a quarter of an inch and suddenly this tool I made slotted right in and it, it seems to have locked now the top dead centre so I'm top dead centre with the bar in, so it's locked at that. On the compression stroke, this side should be loose, and that that is. They look quite big gaps, but I'm not worrying about that. This one won't rock at all. But there's a massive gap here, about an eighth of an inch gap there, and this one's just jammed. So this exhaust valve here is smashed to pieces by the look of it or twisted we'll find out in a minute but i'm on top dead center i'm on the compression stroke and it's locked in position with the bar there uh, so now i've got to go to the next stage of tying in the cam chain and releasing the sprocket so that's going to be my next job now this is quite a tricky bit here is a 50 millimeter torque sprocket bolt that goes through this sprocket that goes on the cam chain. The cam chain goes all the way down so you mustn't lose this. In a minute we're going to tie tie it with a cable tie but we have to undo this. Now I've just done it. I had to use a two foot long bar and the actual torque bolt and it cracked and it worked. It just cracked an almighty crack. I didn't think it was going to lift, so I didn't film that bit. I just had to concentrate. So I've just undone it just now, as you can see, and lever it off. Got to get that free to be able to, because that stays in so that the head will unbolt and pull off. So well, that's it tied tied together. So that stays in while the head comes off. And I have three six millimeter torque bolts, one there, one there, and one that you can't see at the moment inside there. Now we have a ten millimeter bolt right in here. As soon as I put the spanner on you won't see what I'm doing. That's quite a long bolt. It's a Frightens you when they do that, doesn't it? Whew. So now we only have, between us and seeing a nightmare, is four bolts. One, two, three, four. And we have to take these off a little bit of time in a crisscross action. 
So let me go. So this is a 15 millimeter socket. Just do it. Crisscross action. If the cylinder had to come off, now we can see the damage. It usually needs tapping with a rubber faced hammer. Look at that piston, smash the pieces. A huge hole in the side of it. Wow. This is some job, isn't it? And have parts gone down right into the engine. Unbelievably. I suppose when you go in at speed and a valve drops out for some reason, snapped, then the damage is going to be catastrophic. And that's it. just looking at the piston again. I was hoping there wouldn't be a hole in the piston so that at least behind the piston. Everything will be okay, but where's all that metal gone? But I think the metal of the piston has shot down into the engine. So this has turned from a very difficult job to almost an impossible job. It needs a night's rest to think about what to do.